Composing Gloves here, and today we are talking about the slice command. So this very useful command, definitely one you're going to want to have in your, your toolkit, and we're going to go over everything I kind of know about it. In a lot of videos, you're going to see it pop up, and I'll explain a little bit about it just so you know what the command is doing in that case. But it is one of the most flexible commands easily for me, probably somewhere around the importance level of the volume and the panning commands. Probably delay command would probably be above panning. And then there's the slice command. I mean, it's up there for me. So let's just go ahead, go through it, see how it works. And then we'll go into some techniques and various ways it could be used uh, because I make quite heavy use of it. So I'm just going to load up just some random break beat here. So we've got a break beat and there are kind of two modes that it works with. So the first mode is when there is no slices. So right now this sample has no slices. And so it's, it's going to behave differently versus if we did have slices, then that's also going to be different. So let's start off with the first one where there are no slices and then we'll go to the other one after. So first off, we got to put down a note. So we'll put down a note here and the slice command in order for a slice command. So if I put an S here in order for that to work, it must be triggered with a corresponding note command. So what does that mean? Well, okay. So this slice right here is telling it to start at position zero zero in the sample and we'll get to what that means in just a second and let's just uh let me just pull it up and show you it was gonna start at the beginning i could tell it to start in the middle so if i put this command here s80 and we check it out it starts you know smack dab in the middle now if i put another command here and told it to go back to the beginning there's no note trigger command. And because there's no note trigger command, this command will not do anything. So if we look, it never goes back to the beginning or restarts because there was never a note trigger command. But if I put a note with it, now this will suddenly work. So this is the first you know, important thing to understand about the slice command is it needs a note trigger to even work. You can see now it's working. And we, we don't have to go back to the beginning. We could go to like position four zero. Uh, that, that could be cool. And we can move around like that. So first principle needs a note command. Let's talk about what the slice command is uh, actually doing, shall we? So the slice command, when you put down slice command, what it does is it splits it up. So you see here at the top or the bottom, uh, we have zero, zero to F zero. It actually goes up to FF. So this is from zero to 255, gives us 256 blocks of information. And in between each number, like five to six or six to seven, there are 16 uh, values we could have. We could go to any one of these 16 spots. So it's kind of like we have a, uh, it's like we've broken this chunk into 16th notes. It's, it's kind of, I guess you could think of it like that. We've broken it up into 16 equal pieces. And we can, we can move along these. Guess they wouldn't be 16th notes. That would, that's not a good way of thinking about it. But we've broken it up into 16 equal pieces. And we can move around in interesting ways. And there are a couple of values that are more valuable than others. Uh, so for example, if I put S00, we start at position, whoops, we start at position 00, like we would expect. If we want halfway, well, halfway between 8 and 16, or... Halfway between 0 and 16 is 8. I'm thinking of the answer already. So 8's actually right there in the middle between this whole thing. So if you put 8, 0, you'll wind up in the halfway mark. Uh, and now for the beginning piece, this isn't as important. So this first number, I they're technically one big number, but I tend to think of the two spots differently just because when you're going to work with it, it's just going to be more useful that way. So the first spot is kind of like the chunk you're going to go to. That's what I think of it. So this is going to be different depending on what you're dropping in here. But it's going to be the chunk you drop in here is going to be where it goes. And so I'm like, oh, okay, I'm going to go halfway in to this chunk. But once you're in a chunk, like let's say I'm at chunk two. Let's just go over to chunk two. Why not? Once I'm in a chunk, there's a bunch of stuff at a chunk that could be useful. For example, a lot of times the halfway point is a very important point. Uh, because there might be some sort of, you know, secondary thing happening there. Especially if you sync stuff up in interesting ways. Uh, there could be, you know, a kick drum, a snare, a hi-hat. And so typically positions like 8 
for the second piece, this is going to be like halfway into chunk two, halfway between chunk two and chunk three. If we did a value like four, that's like we've gone one fourth of the way in, which is also another hot spot a lot of the times. Or if we go to C, that's 12, we've gone three fourths of the way in. So if you had like hi hats and stuff, you'll find them a lot of the times on four or C. Now, of course, this is not going to stay true every single time. It depends on the sample um, and how it's been synced up. But if things have been laid out on a grid, these numbers are going to be useful to you. So intervals of uh, basically things divisible by four are going to be very helpful. So four, eight, and C, and, and I guess you could toss on zero to that list for the beginning of the next chunk. But then you're then you're on a whole new chunk, right? So anyways, that is how the slice command works when you're dealing with something like this. So for example, I could have a slice command right here. I could uh, I could have us come through the loop and on each time I could go to a different spot, maybe on this one. I go to S3 and we go to the halfway mark. Now I haven't looked, you know, I just loaded up some random samples. So this is going to be something you're going to want to check out and sort of pick on your own, but this is just so we can see it working. So if we go over to the sample now and look at this thing just sort of fly around. So on, so forth. Now, I guess I'll toss one technique on this before we get to the other mode. Uh, just sort of an because it kind of fits here pretty nicely. If we put down a note, oh, I got a message. That was my computer, by the way. So don't, if you thought that was yours, I'm sorry. I'm going to toss a technique in here real quick that I use all the time uh, because it fits with this idea. So here we see that, hey, we're able to trigger these things. What if we triggered them so that they happen, you know, as they go through here, every single line. Why not? If we could kind of force it to play through the sample at the rate. So it's kind of like beat sync, right? Before we could put this down, have a beat sync going, what we could delete this. And we make it perfectly fit to however many lines we have. So this has been set to 32 because it's pretty short. And so what we could say is we could say, hey, you know, why don't we do something like that? We'll put C4, but instead, we're going to copy and then what you usually hit control P to continuously paste. And then we could put down slice commands. So one for the first command, and then we'll go to 32 as well. So we'll put down uh, an S right here. We'll go one before because then we'll restart it right on this one. So this is like it, it restarts. So this is going to be where it finishes. This one's going to finish on SFF. And we want this to select up to here. And then if we hit control I, that is linear interpolate. So this is going to trigger slices that will, will move the playhead. So every line, so the playhead's going to hit, it's going to play a little bit. It's going to hit the next command. It's going to say, oh, no command, but then it's going to go to this slice point. So the play is going to progress through, but it will kind of go backwards or forwards, whatever it's got to do in order to make it fit in that amount of time. So it's not the same thing as beat sync. Beat sync does it, you know, its own way and has those different algorithms. This is sort of like we're cheating the system by causing it to, to snap and take as much time as it needs to go through. So this, uh, you, you may get various results with this, but uh, sometimes it'll like skip the transients of hits, for example, uh, but it opens up some interesting doors. So you see, we were, we were able to just go through and play it and you could hear it skip some transients and whatnot. But you, you get some other options kind of as a result of this. And this is something that sometimes I'll mess around with and do. And other times I'll just go for the beat sync. Beat sync is usually gonna be a better option. Just letting you know that. But it is a handy technique and idea to know about, especially if you're more interested in sample mingling. And when you have commands being triggered like this, you know, just all over the place, things like the up command are only going to be active for the hit because it's going to get a new note and this value is going to be reset. So pitching will happen sort of on a per line basis. So we could put like an up here and then we could go down and it's going to end up pitching this amount and it's going to reset, but the zero zero will copy the three down. And so we sort of have this more granular approach to adding the effects in, which is kind of a nice byproduct. 
<laughs> it's like really smooth, you know? Like it's kind of nice. You can you can do that just fine without without this method. It's just sort of I feel like it's a little it just comes up a little more naturally this way. And it's a fun technique to mess with. You get some some cool ideas and I'm using drum loops where this you know, maybe if you have someone talking or something, you could get some much more sort of bizarre results doing something like this. And maybe we leave off parts of it. Maybe you generate the technique and then we delete it. So these are now just empty. And maybe we delete every other one. Maybe we come in here and let's see here. We come down and uh, we delete every other one. That could be an interesting move. And we could add some gating to try and clean it up a bit and you know maybe create a much tighter feel and then at another point in the track we could have a longer feel and then we could have a version that's just beat synced and now we've got different variations on the same drum loop just a little more economy of means going just a little bit further with the exact same material so that is the slice command with um that is the slice command without slices meaning we don't have slices on our sample. Now let's go ahead and we'll add slices. So let's say I add some slices here. And when we add slices, like let's put one right here and we'll put one right here. When you put slices down, it automatically creates key zones that have it. And the first one is gonna have like everything. And then the others are gonna be those specific slices. And what a slice command will now do, uh, I wanna go back to the waveform. What the slice command will now do is it will trigger a specific slice. And if you use a slice command, well, what notes will do is they'll trigger specific slices and then slice commands will dissect inside of that. So <laughs> I know that sounds crazy. So before when we put down a note, right? If I put down a note like C4, C3, it would pitch the drums up and down. Now, if I put down a note there, did you hear that? No, there was no sound. I have to put down the correct uh, slice point. So you see E3 doesn't have one, but D3 does. And that's because that's what notes correspond to these according to these key zones. So when we look at this, the slice command is gonna behave based off of this. So if we put a slice command with our, with our first bit here, and let's go back to the one step. So we'll put a bunch down and I'll put a slice here, slice, 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 slice. And let's just have it constantly restarting at the halfway point. And you know what? Let's uh, let's leave it alone right there just because I don't know why not just be weird about it. So all these are going to start at the halfway point when the note triggers, except these, which will just start at the beginning of the sample. And we're going to get basically a re-trigger kind of an effect. So you see we're halfway and then we went back to the beginning. So this naturally means that if you do something like auto slicing and there's a, there's a bunch of slices, like if I move this number two, I'm shifting where halfway is and now halfway is gonna be like right here. And this is when you auto slice, you're gonna find this to be the case a lot of the time. So slice commands with eight, four and C uh, are still going to be extremely valuable because, because of this as well as uh, S00. So here, it's just basically we've scrunched down the entire zone to these little bits. So it's kind of like we've gained resolution almost because we've compressed it into these regions using slices. So we can, we can trigger different slices using notes, but we can access those slices using access different points in that slice by using the slice command. By the way, I'm calling it the slice command because it starts with S. I'm honestly not actually sure if it's actually called the slice command or not. But that is the other way that this works. And uh, yeah, it's a pretty interesting thing. It's something I use all the time. Uh, let's go ahead, let me make sure I haven't skipped anything. I have a couple notes here, uh, just to make sure I don't miss anything. There's one more thing I wanna cover here. And then if you have some other killer ideas, uh, let me know. Uh, in my scratching tutorial, I had a pretty good demonstration of a use for a slice command. So we have scratch experiments and this was a, a while back and the whole notion of the slice command was I'm using it here. So I'm doing something really crazy with the sample. You can go watch the video if you want. Uh, it's basically trying to emulate scratching. And you notice this slice command isn't doing anything, but that's because I, I dished it out to another track later to just make my life easier. 
So this is like doing something, you know, all crazy with one sample. And then I've got another sample, but I'm starting it with a slice on chunk one. Uh, I just invented this chunk terminology, by the way, just because it, it kind of makes sense to me to talk about it that way. So this is going to start on slice one. What is this? Instrument one. So we'll go to that and we'll look at this. So it starts right here. It doesn't start right at the beginning because that'd be kind of weird because, you know, I'm doing all this stuff and it would make sense that we pick up somewhere else. So this is just a demonstration of an extremely basic use of the slice command where I just want to have it pick up where a, sen a, a sensible point after like, you know, I'm pitching stuff up and causing gating commands and uh, doing things backwards and forwards. And so the slice command here is being used to simply facilitate that and make it just a lot more reasonable. And then I have, there's a bunch of examples in this one. So if you missed this tutorial, you can go ahead and check that out. Uh, but that is the, the notion here. And this is really the core, like I'd say like 90% of the time, 95%. I'm using the slice command for these kinds of shenanigans. Just trying to replace my cursor in a place that makes sense and trigger it in a way that's, that's fine. If you have beat sync on, um, it's, it's going to sync up for that. So I'm not using it to do the interpolation or anything. I, I don't need that. I just need a place to go. That's really what I think the core of the slice command is all about. It just so happens that it lines up quite nicely with all these other kind of weird, bizarre things that we can do if you want to just sort of push the envelope and get make renoise this look a lot crazier and sound a lot crazier if you have any questions about this feel free to let me know again if you're sleeping on any uh slice command techniques that i missed here that you're like oh you got to cover this one this is like one of my favorites or if there's some cool tool that you like that can do nifty things with the slice command uh hit me up but you'll see this command sleeping in a lot of my processes subscribe and have a blessed day